Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I'll help you design smarter, not harder. Today we're gonna to be going over a few options for removing your design from its background. I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with, especially for things like t-shirts and printing and sending your designs to your manufacturer. So hopefully this video will clear that up for you. Now let's get started. So I've got a few sample designs in here. These are all designs that I've done uh, that I just feel will make a good example for removing the backgrounds from. I wouldn't really say there's the ultimate best way to remove a background from a design, but there is the best way for that specific design. Let's first start by going over blending modes. So when you're throwing a design onto a mock-up, for example, this design, I'll throw that onto my t-shirt mock-up. And quick plug, by the way, this is my vintage t-shirt mock-up that's available on my web store. You can see that black background is still very apparent in the design. If I turn these layers off here, you can see that better. So that black background is still in this design. And obviously we don't want this on the mock-up. So what we can do for strictly mock-up purposes is just turn this blending mode to screen and that's going to pretty much isolate everything but black on this design and now we have just the design on the mock-up the black background is gone or it's actually blended into the mock-up and for mock-up purposes this is just fine i mean it looks pretty good on the mock-up but you wouldn't really send this file off to print because you know, if i turn this back to a normal blending mode we still have that black background in it so how do we remove the actual background from this let's start with a pretty popular technique i think a lot of people know about this and i've used it quite often it is called color range it's up in select and then color range and color range pretty much lets you select a specific color out of your design and lets you control the intensity of how that color appears now it's easy to just show you so let's go ahead and use color range on this design we'll go up to select and then color range and from here you can pick pretty much any color you want as long as in the select parameter here you have sample colors so right now i can't even see the design because of the selection preview is on black matte so if I change this to none, I can see the whole design, but then I won't be able to see my selection. If I change this to white matte, it'll show me pretty much everything that I'm selecting. And of course I can use the fuzziness slider here to see how much of that color that I wanna select. So using the color dropper here, which since I'm on sample colors, all I have to do is click on anywhere in the design to select a color. Since I'm trying to remove the background, obviously I'll click on the black background. And with this white matte selection preview, which I'll use since I'm on a dark background, I can see pretty much everything that's going to be exempt from the selection and I can use this fuzziness slider here to change the intensity of that selection. You can also use the quick mask selection preview to see everything that's exempt from your selection highlighted in red. I prefer the white matte just because we're on our black background and it lets me see uh, pretty much all of what I'm selecting. We can adjust the fuzziness slider here until I've got most of the design highlighted in white here, but I don't want to bring it all the way down because that's going to mistake some of the darker values in this design for the black background and that's simply not what I want. I want to keep uh, as much integrity of this design as I can in the selection. So I'll go for somewhere around maybe 15 to 20 or 15 to 30 and this depends of course on your design so you're gonna have to pretty much play with this until you find the right settings. I'll go with 20 here. I'll press OK. And now all I have to do is make a layer mask on this layer. So I'll click the layer mask icon down here and that will make our selection into a layer mask. We want to invert this layer mask by using command I on our keyboard. And now we have just the design without the black background, but it's not so easy to see if we got that selection just right. So what I like to do is go all the way down and create a colorful layer at the bottom of my layers. So I'll create a solid colorful layer here and I'll just turn that to a slightly lighter color than what my background is. So since I'm on a black background, I'll do a dark gray. If I was on a white background, I'd do a light gray. So let's just keep this about here, press okay. And now we can see that our design is pretty much completely ridden of that black background. If I were to throw this on the mock-up now, that is now completely transparent parent and I don't have to use any blending modes or whatever to rid it of that black background and this file can now be sent off to print. This design obviously isn't color separated so if I was sending this off to screen print I'd have to let the screen printer handle all the color separation but for DTG this is perfectly fine and is completely ready for print. Also if you'd like you can get rid of this layer mask or pretty much just rasterize it by applying it so just right click on the layer mask and click apply layer mask and now we have that design on its transparent background Without the layer mask, if I turn all the backgrounds off, you can see that design is fully transparent. So boom, we got that one all done and finished. Let's now try this on a white background. So I've got this wrap pack design here and I wanna do the same thing. I wanna remove it from this white background. So same exact procedure here. We'll go into select color range and then we'll just click on that white background using our eyedropper. And let's change this selection preview to black matte because now we're on a white background 
and we want to see what we're not selecting. So now again, we can adjust the fuzziness slider here to play with how much transparency we want to keep in this design. So if I bring the fuzziness slider all the way up this way, we can see that the color is now being incorporated into the selection and that's not what we want. So I'm going to bring that all the way down again to about 20, 30, somewhere in that range where most of the design is covered in black by the black max selection preview. And that means we pretty much got the whole background selected without sacrificing any of the detail in the actual design. So now I can press okay on this, but one little tip, if I want the selection to be inverted from the jump so that it selects pretty much just the design instead of the background, we just press this little invert check here and press okay on this. And now when I make a layer mask out of this, it's going to only show us the design. And now just so we can see this better, I have to do the opposite down here. So instead of having a dark gray background to test this out, I'm gonna change this to a light gray background. Obviously this is meant for a white background, but having this gray color below the design just helps us check for any artifacts in our selection that we don't want and that we might wanna fine tune. So I press okay on this. And now we can look around this design and see if there's anything we might wanna improve on. So this is all looking pretty good to me. But if I did wanna fine tune this, I'd go into the levels of this layer mask and play with that until I find whatever looks right and whatever removes the most white from this while keeping it all intact this looks good to me i'll press ok here and just to finally test this out i'll change this background to white it looks like we didn't sacrifice any of the detail in the design to remove the background so if i turn all these off we can see that we now have this fully transparent on its own layer and again if you want to isolate this from the layer mask just go ahead and apply it by right clicking and applying that layer mask this is a great technique and it has its place especially when your design has a lot of transparency like this one does if i zoom in always you can see the transition into the colors here has a lot of gradients and whatnot now what if you have a design that's pixel by pixel there's no transparency in it if i zoom in for example on this metallica design you can see that all these pixels are completely opaque there's no gradients here there's no transparencies and something like this would happen if you used threshold on your design if you use my threshold technique or any of my products like depth tone vintone dither tone they all leave you with this crunchy pixel by pixel fully opaque design and that's because it leaves it perfect for screen print but there's still a black background on this that i'd like to remove but now we don't have to worry about any transparencies because all the pixels on this design are fully opaque relative to the background so the best way to do that and what i do for these designs is i just take my magic wand over here and i make sure that anti-alias is unchecked and i'll click on the black background and i can remove it i'll just press delete on that and now we have this design fully isolated from the background if i zoom in you see it's the same pixels from the design but now we're just missing that black background. Now this is fully ready to send off to print, especially screen print because I used my depth tone template on this. So everything's already color separated for me. But again, you just wanna make sure that you have anti-alias unchecked here. If I have that checked on and I go ahead and try to remove the background here, I'll press delete on this. Now you can see when I zoom in, that all these pixels are not fully opaque. If I turn the background off here and I zoom in even more, these pixels are not fully opaque. They are transparent and it's not what we want. So when anti-alias is turned on, it doesn't create a sharp selection and it doesn't leave us with fully opaque pixels, which is not what we want. So just make sure anti-alias is unchecked when you use this method. Now let's move on to the final and probably best technique. This is what I use most often. It's called blend if, and blend if is sort of a hidden function in Photoshop. It's in the layer styles panel here. It's unfortunate that it's so hidden because it's amazing and it's really easy to use. So I have my example Nirvana design in here and I wanna remove the right background from this. And so we'll use blend if to do that. Before I do that though, I wanna make sure that I have my gray, my light gray colorful layer turned on. So when I start blending the white out of this design using blend if, I can see how much white we're getting instead of doing guesswork on this. And you'll see what I mean more in just a second. So let's open up the layer styles panel on this design and take a look at blend if right here. So now I can remove either the black or the white from this design just by using these blend if sliders here. And we wanna do that on the current layer, of course. So make sure you're doing this in the current layer parameter here. So if I start dragging the white inwards a bit, you can see that it's removing any white from this design and it's revealing that light gray background that we have below this layer. But when I zoom in here, we can see that the selection or the blending here is pretty sharp and harsh. And we don't really want that. We want it to be a smooth blend. So we can do that by holding down Alt or Option on our keyboard and pressing this little triangle here. And now we'll split it into two separate triangles. And now we can bring one of these all the way up here and one of these all down here. And now we can create a smoother selection here and a smoother blend by dragging these apart from each other. So I'll just drag the left end one a bit in here. And if I zoom in here, you can see that the gradient fade or the blending is much smoother now than compared to what we had before. If I bring these back two together, it's a very harsh selection. If I split them apart and drag them apart from each other, now we have a nice gradient blend 
from the background to the design here. But of course, we don't want to sacrifice any color or detail in the design by doing this. So make sure that when you're playing with these sliders, all the color is still intact. Right now, I've lost a bit of green and reds on the top of this design, which you can see if I bring this back in, we're losing those colors in the Nirvana logo over there. So I just want to bring this back just far enough so that we're not getting any white artifacts, but that we're also not losing any color or detail in the design here. So about right here is good. I'll press OK on this. And of course, this is only a layer style on the layer. So the actual layer still has that white background in it which we can see in the layer thumbnail here. But if I wanted to rasterize that layer style and completely remove the background from this, we can't do rasterize layer style in here. I don't know why Photoshop doesn't let you, but instead we could just merge this with an empty layer. So we'll create a new empty layer here and select our Nirvana example as well. Command E to merge. And now we have this design fully transparent with the background removed. If I turn off these layers here, we can see that we completely removed the white background from this design. We did so without sacrificing any of the colors here or the detail in this design. And of course, we could do the same thing on a black background as well. We'll just go into the layer styles of this vague design here and drag the black slider up and split those using the option key on the keyboard and clicking on that triangle. And then we can just bring these sliders up to where we feel fits best and doesn't sacrifice any color or detail, but still removes the whole black background from the design. And that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or got any value from it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.